sure you watch the very end of the video. I will be doing a giveaway. Uh, details are going to be at the very end. So if you want to win, make sure you watch. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today, we're actually going to be doing a little bit of a pretty cool install. Um, we're going to be installing an ethanol sensor so that we can run a mixture of E85 and premium gasoline. So, let me show you the kit that I got. All right, guys, so the kit that I actually um, have in my possession is from Motorworks LLP. Um, this is a smaller company. If those of you um, that have, have been or are a part of the Accord X uh, forums on Facebook, um, you know the gentleman, Keith Castillo. Uh, he was making these kits uh, months and months and months back. Um, Nowadays, you're going to find kits out there like Siri Moto. It's the exact same kit, um, but Keith was actually making these kits prior to you know Siri Moto or even you know the the actual Flex Fuel by PRL. So um, there are a couple guys that are running this kit right now. Um, I have one in, in my possession, and I'm actually going to install this on the car today um, and walk you guys through it. Now, if you decide to purchase a Siri Moto um ethanol sensor kit so that you can run a blend of e85 with gasoline um, this install is going to be exactly the same so let me show you what we have in the box so right now we have a kit from innovative motorsports we have a gauge pod so that we can mount the uh, gauge sensor in the vehicle and then we have two molded gas lines Okay, now in this innovative motorsports kit, let me show you guys what comes with it. So you have the actual gauge, which is gonna tell you your mixture and all the associated wiring harnesses. You have the actual ethanol content sensor, and then you have its wiring harness here in the bag as well. So this is gonna be mounted somewhere over here next to the high pressure fuel rail, or I'm sorry, the high pressure fuel pump and gas line, which is this one right here. And then you also have a different face for the gauge. And then if you needed to, you have the programmable cable. Um, if you decide that you wanna do any sort of additional tuning on top of this, um, you will need a serial to USB cable. And of course, some sort of laptop and software to run that. And then in the box, we have these two awesome Innovative Motorsports decals. So today we're gonna to go through the process of getting this installed. Uh, keep in mind that when you are running a mixed E85 with gasoline um, tune on your vehicle that you will need to have the vehicle tuned. Now this kit actually does come with its own baseline tune so that you can run a mixture of between E30 and E40. So that's a diluted blend of E85 with premium gasoline. Um, or if you choose to, uh, you can go out and get a custom tune from any one of the tuners locally that would be able to tune on this system. So your choice, uh, but mine already comes with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this installed. Once it's installed, we're gonna get a baseline run. So we're gonna go back out to, the, to Mexico. Um, we're gonna get some zero to 60 times with just the regular K-Tuner uh, stage two tune on the vehicle. And then we're gonna go ahead and mix the E85 and premium gasoline to get close to a, um, an E40 mixture and then we're going to do some 0 to 60 times with that as well. Um, I do have a, an application that I'm going to use. It's not like you know the best application out there but it's going to give us some ballparks so that we understand that when we install a kit like this or when we're running some sort of blended E85 tune does the car perform well and that's ultimately what you guys are looking for. If I put this on my vehicle is it gonna go faster? And that's what I care about as well. So we're gonna get down to that. We're gonna to go to the install. Um, the install is pretty straightforward, um, but I'm gonna walk you guys through it step by step. So let's go to step one. All right, so the very first thing that you wanna do, open up your gas tank. Now, in the back of your vehicle, in the trunk, um, if you look underneath the actual carpeting, you should have some Honda provided tools there. One of them is gonna be this filler. Now, all we're gonna do with the filler is we're gonna stick it into the gas neck and we're gonna be just releasing vapor out from there. So all we're doing is we're putting it in there. Um, if you were here now, you could smell the gasoline vapor coming out and that's all we're doing is we're relieving pressure in the fuel tank. The very next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to 
remove the cover for the fuse panel inside of the engine bay and we're going to remove a fuse out of there. So let me go ahead and remove this cover. Alright, so with the panel removed, we are going to locate and remove the PGM FI main relay 2 from within this fuse box. And that's actually, if we're looking directly over it, it's actually going to be this second one right here. And all we're going to do is just take a pair of needle nose pliers and we're just going to pull this guy out. So just wiggle back and forth until we can get it removed. Okay, it is removed from the vehicle. Go ahead and set that off to the side somewhere where you're not going to lose it if you start the vehicle. Um, now the next part of the process is we are going to start the engine. We're going to let it idle until the vehicle dies. Um, of course at this point because you've done that you've taken out this relay. Uh, the car is going to throw some codes. Don't worry about that because we're going to get those to go away later. Um, that's just part of the process in order to one vent the gasoline from the tank and two uh, make sure that we don't have any high pressure in the fuel lines when we go to remove those so let's go ahead and start the vehicle all right so now that the car has died we're going to remove this from the gas tank and then we need to disconnect the negative side of the battery terminal which is obviously going to be the black one plus for positive Usually your black wire is negative. We're gonna go ahead and get this disconnected. Um, it looks like all we gotta do is remove this nut here, remove the cabling, and we're good to go. So let's get that removed. All right, so now that the negative terminal of the battery is disconnected, we're gonna go ahead and remove the bracket that protects your fuel line. Um, so it's held on by two bolts right there. Uh, they are 10 millimeter bolts, so let's go ahead and remove those. All right, so let me show you real quick how to actually manipulate this. Uh, so you have this little connector here that all it's doing is shielding the connection between the hard line and your rubber line. So in order to get this out of the way, um, you'll see that it has a little tail that kind of curves underneath and you just push up and this thing will pop out of place. And then from there, that little tail, it's swiveling on the hard line. You just pull it to the side and that's what you're looking at. So we're gonna move that out of the way. Um, we, we are going to then push on this side and then there's one on the uh, opposite side so that they open up and then we're gonna pull the line away. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna set you up on the tripod and I'm gonna do this um, with you guys watching from the tripod so I can catch any gas if there is any that sprays. All right, so I took the clip off holding on the rubber line See if we can get a little bit more flexibility in it. So it did spray. All right, so now that we have taken off the first connection, um, we're just gonna follow the hose back here. So one end is wrapped up in the towels, hose goes back. Um, there's some clips right here, right here, and then there's another one of those little white connectors that we took off before. Um, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna take the clips off first, 
so that we have access to the hose. Then we're gonna pull off the little white cover and then we're gonna pull off the hose completely. And then we're gonna go through the process of installing the supplied hoses and then the sensor. So let's get to this right now. All right, so now that the line's off, um, you can see it underneath this foam section, underneath this larger uh, thick wiring loom here is the actual hard line for it. And then the other hard line is this guy right here. So all we're gonna do is take the hose that was supplied with my kit, plug it in, one end to the sensor, and then the other end of the sensor that does not have a hose to it will get it routed into this hard line. So basically it'll be hose, sensor, hose to hard line. And then from there I can zip tie it to the car. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Let me go ahead and get everything connected and then I'll show you guys how I routed it. Clips in to the hard line, comes down, clips into the ethanol sensor, wire runs, or the hose runs up back into the stock location and then mounts back right here. So that's how the hose was manufactured. Um, you know, unlike the PRL kit that just mounts nice and neat up here, uh, this one right here is, you know, of course, kind of sitting back here. Which is fine, as long as it's not in the way and doesn't necessarily touch anything, we should be fine. So, let me button up everything. Let me put um, these little connectors back in place, put the shield back on, and then we're probably gonna get to filming tomorrow because it's getting really dark out here. So let me button everything up. All right guys, so it is day two. Uh, we are back in the daylight and today we're actually gonna finish the process of installing. Have any questions up to this point, go ahead and put them down in the comments. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, just make sure that, you know, of course you remove the stock uh, fuel line, um, have some racks handy because whenever I pulled the line off yesterday, there was still residual fuel that was left in the lines. Um, Please, please, please make sure that your car is at least cooled down. Uh, mine was pretty cooled down yesterday, um, but there could have been some mishaps had that uh, fuel hit, you know, the exhaust system that's kind of right below right there. You can see it's nice and, and shiny right now. Um, but had fuel hit that or anywhere hot on the engine, it could have started a fire. So just make sure that everything is nice and cool before you start this process. Um, it's a very easy install. You replace the fuel lines, uh, put in the new kit. Um, I haven't buttoned everything down yet, right? So these clips right here, because I um, once we go through the process of putting the gauge in the car and we start it up, I wanna make sure there's no fuel leaks. If there's no fuel leaks, then we're gonna go ahead and button everything up uh, here in this section, and then uh, we're good to go. We can go ahead and run the car, get a baseline, uh, whole nine yards. Um, also, since we've already run the fuel lines, go ahead and make sure that you put your uh, cover back on for your fuses. Go ahead and put your negative battery terminal back on, and then we still have, like I said, the, the gauge wires that we need to run, but we're pretty much buttoned up inside of the engine bay. Um, we just need to take it into the cabin at this point. So I'm gonna go get a flashlight and we are gonna see if we can run this harness into the vehicle from one of these two grommets. So let's get to it. All right guys, so we have found our access point. So as you can see uh, right here behind the screwdriver, uh, there are two grommets that get you access to the inside of the cabin. Okay, so one of them is actually for this smaller harness here, and then the other one is for this big, thick harness right there. Now both of them tuck up right underneath the driver's side. Um, they're right above where your gas pedal and or clutch uh, is located. Um, and I'm gonna use the smaller of the two just because the wires that I have to run through it, um, there's a little bit more, and I don't think if I ran them through that larger section that they would fit. So what I've done is I've just pried the little grommet off and I'm gonna run the wires back through um, now as you can see here they're already shielded okay so I don't have to worry about anything cutting them um, but I'm gonna run them back through there I'm gonna take you inside the car so you can see exactly uh, where this is located now once they're in the vehicle um, I'm gonna end up mounting the gauge probably somewhere on this driver's side so I'm gonna have to run it 
in through the vehicle, along this inner firewall, and then up the kick panel, and then place it over here somewhere. We're gonna get into all of that together, um, but I just wanted to show you where the entry point was. If we take a step back and look at where the engine is located here, you can see that that grommet is right here where the screwdriver is pointing into. It is just to the left of the brake fluid reservoir. Um, and again, there's only two access points uh, into the cabin. Um, one of them is a smaller harness, the other one is a larger, thicker uh, wiring harness. It's gonna be the smaller of the two. So let's go inside the vehicle and let's take a look at it. All right, so starting down here on the driver's side, we are going to tuck up underneath, turn on the flashlight here. We are gonna tuck up underneath and if you can actually see here, let me just pull my screen out where I can see it. Up underneath, so you can actually see the tip of the screwdriver there. I'm gonna see if I can funnel the light on it. So this section right here, there's the tip of the screwdriver. Um, this smaller cluster of wires comes in right here. And over here is the other grommet. So this is where the larger wire uh, engine harness comes into the cabin, the larger one. And the smaller one is right here. As you can see, the screwdriver is sticking up. That's this guy right here. Um, so I'm just gonna feed the wire through that section. It is going to come across the back side over here. And I do have zip ties for this. And then from there, we will run it up the side right here and then get it installed over here. Ideally, that's where it's gonna go. So I haven't finalized the, uh, the placement of it. Um, I may even mount it somewhere down here. Um, but we'll get into that here in one second. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and pull the cable through down here and get it ran inside the cabin. All right guys, so what I did was I ran the cable over the top of the pedals and now it's resting on the driver's side where the kick panel's at. Now, in order to remove the kick panel, you have to pull back from the back side and then these little tabs will slide out. Same thing with the bottom. You can pull up this piece right here um, and then the kick panel will just fall out of place. Now, the reason why I did that is because I'm going to zip tie the cable right here and that way if I want to run it up this way, like I told you I would, I have access to doing that. Um, but I would like to zip tie this in place. That way there's no movement uh, up above. So. There's mounting locations like I had mentioned before. Um, I think this area right here would probably be ideal for the gauge itself. Um, that way the wires can run down along the side here and we'll be good to go. Um, in order to fit it to this eBay gauge pod though, um, I'm probably going to wrap some electrical tape um, around this section just to make it a little bit thicker and then it'll fit nice and snug in there. Um, there's not a way for this to, to mount in there as is unless the, the gauge was a little bit thicker. So I think this is where my location is going to be. Um, I'll mount it right there and then I'll just make the gauge, you know, of course, level in the vehicle and then we can go that route. Now this gauge um, pod, it was like 10 bucks on eBay. Um, it comes with this little adhesive uh, backing here and then the, the mount itself. So it would mount like that. And then if you're familiar with like the way GoPro is kind of set up, it's got that same little you know, GoPro style mount that uh, you just put the screw through. Um, now, what I need to do is I need to actually get this wired up. 
So let's go through the process of getting power to the gauge and then we're gonna go ahead and place it in the vehicle. All right guys, so we need to pull a fuse directly above the kick panel. So the orientation that you guys are at, um, you are where your feet would typically be on the pedals and you're looking up uh, almost right above where you would pull the trunk, uh, I'm sorry, the hood release. So right above there, if you guys have K-Tuners or your OBD2 reader, it's this right here. This is your OBD2 reader. Right above that is your, um, your fuse panel. Okay, so we need to actually pull the fourth 10 amp fuse in this first row right here. Okay, so you have a blank spot that counts as one. You have two, three, four, and then you have a 7.5. It's the only 7.5 in this entire row. So you need to pull this fourth one right here. Okay, now if you guys remember um, in the installation earlier when we pulled off the uh, fuse panel cover in the engine bay, there's this nice little clip set here that you can use to pull out the fuse. So we're gonna go ahead and pull out this 10 amp. Okay, and then I'm gonna show you guys the why the rest of the wiring harness that we need to tap into this. Okay, so we're gonna be using uh, this same port right here with the tapper. So let's go take a look at that. This little kit right here, uh, wiring harness is provided with the kit. Uh, this part would plug into the back of the gauge uh, and these are for power. Okay, so this is gonna be ground. This is gonna be what we tap into the fuse panel. And we're gonna go ahead and just insert this 10 into the back of this. Should be like so. Okay, now this entire thing is gonna clip into that fourth slot that I showed you before. And then when we plug this into the back of our gauge, we should now have power. Now keep in mind, we do have to ground this. So you can uh, ground this at any number of points in the vehicle. Um, it does come with a self-tapping screw, so I'm gonna find a location that I can tap into uh, the metal body. So let's go find a place for this. All right guys, so we're going to get this installed now. Uh, when you insert this fuse block, the thicker end, as you can see here, let me put you in range there. When I say thicker end, I mean the part that is protruding outwards is gonna go up towards your legs, okay? so. If you can see here, when we plug it in, it's actually gonna be covering the 7.5 fuse, like so. So you'll still have open spot, 10, 10, where the fuse goes in, cover 7.5, 10, space, 10, 10, and then space. So again, fuse block goes up towards your legs and covers that 7.5. So let's find a location for the grounding wire. All right guys, so right next to the fuse panel, there's actually a solid piece of metal right here that has a hole in it already. And I already have some hardware here that um, I'll show you guys what it is here in a second. It's basically just um, a screw and two nuts, but they fit perfectly in this hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the, right there, right where the light's on. Um, I'm gonna put the grounded wire through there, and then I'm gonna put the screw and then I'm gonna put two nuts so that it can't back out. And that's gonna be where my ground is at. So that way you don't have to worry about um, taking off any paint um, anywhere here in the body or scratching it. This is just a, 
this is a negative piece of metal so let me get it set up and then i'll show you guys real quick what it looks like all right guys so i installed the grounding wire as you can see right there right above that yellow plug where the light's on that's the grounding cable going into that bracket that already had a hole and all i did was slide a bolt through there um, I put the grounding cable on the top side and then I did one nut to tighten it down and then I did a secondary nut to lock everything in place. Um, is it perfect? No, but it definitely works. Uh, everything fits perfectly. Um, I will show you what hardware I used to get it into that hole. Um, I didn't have to expand anything, I didn't have to do anything uh, out of the ordinary, just found the location, mounted it. We have our fuse in there. Um, we are good to go at this point, so we're going to pull back. This is where we're at in the vehicle. And now we're going to start to plug in the actual cable, and then we're going to get the... We're going to get the gauge mounted up right here. So let's get to that process. All right guys, so a slight change of plans. So no matter where I tried to mount the gauge pod, anywhere up here in the upper section, um, I couldn't get any of the adhesive to stick. Uh, I even went and used some of the Automotive Strength 3M tape and it just would not stick to this. So what I'm gonna do is, I've already drilled a pilot hole and I've come up with a number of places that I wanted to try to mount it in the interior. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna mount it right here. And the reason why is because I can easily replace these little cutouts. Um, for those of you guys that are running higher models that actually have buttons here, you can't run it there. So, you know, maybe be creative and do something yourself. Um, but this is basically going to sit over those two, still leaving those exposed. And it's going to be kind of catty corner. So it's going to go one pilot hole here, one pilot hole there. Uh, this unit mounts right here. And then the uh, the gauge itself is going to be sitting right here. Now I've already sat in the vehicle. I put it here. Um, it does not get in the way of my legs. Um, only thing I need to be cautious of is if for whatever reason I am, you know, exiting the vehicle fast. Um, maybe doing like a tuck and roll or something then I need to I need to be careful with um, hitting this. But the initial test, um, it puts it in a good location. It's nice and visible for myself. Um, I don't have to screw anything into the dash or in any of the lower plastics. And if I have to replace these, these are like $1.25 each. So I think that's what I'm gonna do for right now. So let me go ahead and get this um, installed. We're gonna get the gauge set up, all the wires plugged in, and then we can finally test it. See if power comes on to the gauge and the sensor. Um, I'm not going to actually turn the ignition on just yet uh, because I need to check to see if it's going to leak. Um, but I'm just going to see if when I do accessory mode, if power comes on to this. And it looks like it's working. Right on. So I am going to go ahead and set you guys up outside of the car now and we are going to attempt to start the vehicle, make sure there's no gas leaks.
right guys, so that is the end of the video. So hopefully you guys learned something from this particular install. Um, I do want to throw a quick shout out to several different individuals that helped my ass out during this process. Um, as much as I know about cars, I know even less about uh, ethanol and flex fuel. So huge shout out goes out to Joel Felix, um, to Eddie Wilson, and to Keith Castillo. Um, you guys definitely helped a brother out when I needed it. I had a lot of questions, um, but you guys definitely came in clutch. Um, and for those of you guys that don't know, Keith was the one that manufactured this kit. Um, as I said before, he did it before uh, the Siri Moto Group. Um, so if you guys are looking for, you know, parts uh, of this nature, um, he can hook you up. And if you're not a part of it, go check out the 10th Gen Accord. Um, and then in quotes or parentheses, it is Accord X. Uh, check out that group. It's just a bunch of shenanigans in there. Everybody, you know, loves their cars. And, uh, you know, there's some heavy hitters in that group. So for those of you guys, um, like I said, that uh, helped me out with this. It is very much appreciated. And, uh, you know, hopefully at some point in time, I can pay you guys back um, with the knowledge that you guys, you know, passed down to me. Uh, but that is the end of the video. Uh, once again, this is Fahrenheit Motorsports. And you guys have a great day. And keep on pushing. Um, oh, one more thing. So I'm actually going to be doing a giveaway right now. Um, and I'm gonna be setting a, a limit to it. So this time, um, let's say the giveaway is going to be at Sunday night, 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Um, I'm gonna be giving away a set of the sequential bumper lights. Um, if you guys don't know what those are, go check out the sequential bumper light install. Uh, but the vendor did give me an extra set of lights and I'm going to give them away to somebody in the Accord community. So if you don't already have them, great. If you already have them, you can still be a part of this process. You can sell them, um, do whatever you want with them. Um, in order to enter, the only thing that you need to do is one, make sure that you subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. Um, and then I want you to like this video or upvote this video and then leave a comment in the comment section because um, that's how I'm going to go about picking the winner of this um, through one of those randomized comment generated pickers um, but just leave a comment uh, it doesn't matter what it is as long as your name is tied to uh, a comment then uh, the generator can pick your name uh, so again it's for a set of sequential bumper lights brand new sealed in the box um, I'm gonna be doing another giveaway probably in the next video or the video after that um, but again I will be doing a, um, a drawing I'm gonna announce the winner on uh, here on the next YouTube video, but I'm also going to be uh, announcing the winner on my Instagram. So if you want to know who's going to win when I do the drawing on next Sunday at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, uh, make sure that you're subscribed to my Instagram. My Instagram is JDM Dreamin, and uh, I will announce the winner on there. So Good luck to everybody. Uh, once again, thank you so much for watching these videos. I really appreciate it um, by you guys watching and subscribing. Um, it definitely helps me out uh, so I can continue to pass down knowledge to you know those of you that don't have the necessary skills and or knowledge um, to make these modifications yourself. And rather than paying you know a shop to do it, um, you can do it yourself. Break out you know some hand tools and get to work. So uh, once again. Have a great day. Thanks so much.